their ego into the battle. The most common way that you can accidentally bring the other man's ego into the battle is by directly and harshly attacking him personally with your words. Picture two drunk guys outside of a bar. The alcohol in their systems causes both men to lose logic and common sense. So when they get into a verbal battle, both men start immediately calling each other a-holes and similar names. These direct attacks trigger each man's ego defenses, and once this happens, autopilot fight mode is engaged and the situation will quickly turn physical. The second rule of handling a verbal battle with other men is to never ever get defensive. This is a catastrophic mistake that almost every guy makes without even realizing. Imagine you're playing Call of Duty or a similar game. Your opponent starts taking shots at you, and after they start hitting you, you just stand there and start trying to reload. Meanwhile, while you're standing there getting hit and trying to reload, the shots just keep coming, one after the other, relentlessly. This perfectly describes what would happen to you in a verbal battle. Let's imagine that you're in school and some guy says, Man, look how weak you are, you can't even lift that chair. After hearing those words, your automatic reaction is to get defensive and respond with an explanation as to why you can't lift the chair. This is the wrong way to handle it. It's like in a boxing match when one guy gets a solid hit on the other and sends him reeling against the ropes. After he sees that he almost knocked the guy out with that single punch, he unleashes everything he has on his opponent right away and wins the fight. Instead of being defensive and trying to defend yourself after the first verbal attack, the correct thing to do is immediately respond with a counterattack against your opponent. But what do you actually say? How can you effectively disable your opponent and win the verbal battle? The best way to dominate the other man consists of two things. The first thing that you must do is disarm him without harming his ego. This can be accomplished by replying with something that takes a good amount of brain power to process. For example, let's say the guy who's battling you is some guy who works out and has bigger muscles than most other guys. Your counterattack could be something like, well, I guess what they say about guys with big muscles is true after all. Your counterattack should also be conveyed using a light, joke like tone. The tone that you use is just as important as what you actually say because it conveys confidence and it shows your opponent that a you're not afraid of him and b that you're far from defensive after his first attack if you're wondering why you need to counter with something that forces your opponent to really think hard to know what you meant it's because doing this basically disarms your opponent mentally in the example the guy will wonder what you meant by a guy with big muscles and the complex mental activity of trying to figure it out is like you landing a solid punch in a boxing match after your counter attack there's still one more thing that you need to do to win the battle and it's simple you need to walk away think about all the times that you've been involved in a verbal battle with other guys or even girls and how these situations ended in most cases, it just turns into a shouting match going back and forth between each person until you both get too exhausted to continue. When this happens, nobody wins and you both walk away as losers. It's like when a rapper reaches the pinnacle of his career and instead of leaving on a high note as a winner, he tries to fight back against negative momentum and ends up ruining his previous good image. Once you deploy your counterattack against your opponent and leave him reeling against the ropes, just walk away before he has a chance to recover and leave the battle as a winner. With this knowledge, you can effectively and psychologically dominate any man who starts a verbal battle with you. A famous quote once said, Be careful with your words because once they are said, they can only be forgiven, never forgotten. And with that said, until next time, thanks for watching. Interesting. It's an interesting uh, video. I think it's mostly right um, for most people, in most contexts. I would let's look at that example of how to verbally conquer another male, or how to how to be how to be dominant by a successful use of language, basically. So if we take that same example of the guy who says, "Man, you're so weak, you can't lift that chair." I mean, there's lots of things you could do with that, right? But I guess my, if you're going to go to a default kind of response, one default that you can almost always use is make the other person the subject of your anthropology. So you can say something like, oh, that's interesting. Let's take a look at why it is that you said that. So do you know yourself why? Pro probably you're not really consciously aware of it. I think asking questions is always a good strategy as well. Uh, especially if the relevance is not immediately clear. Where did you go to elementary school? An irrelevant, apparently irrelevant question as though you didn't even hear what he said or something. Uh, and we get whatever answer, what does that matter? Hmm, interesting. Okay, cool. What do you mean? <laughs> cool, I didn't even answer you. Oh, you did. Any response is an answer. I was, I'm looking to see, understand you a little bit better. You're an interesting, an interesting person. I mean. You don't like being interesting? So, the thing is, if you're not verbally skilled or whatever, this, the advice in that uh, video there is pretty good and, and it's definitely important to remember that in any kind of confrontational situation depending on the way it builds up and when, when, how it takes place prior to something you'll probably be overcome by adrenaline so I remember I got into a uh, conflict with this guy at one of my jobs and um, he ended up calling the cops on me I got shaky during that conflict it's like um, just because I had so much adrenaline rushing through me. But in the end, I won the conflict because he did something stupid. And that's the thing. Don't do something stupid.
you know, you can always live to fight another day if you don't do something stupid. He's got no no cards left to play because he called the cops on me because he didn't like what I was saying. And that's just, I mean, you're going to lose. If, if you didn't do anything, like you didn't strike anybody, if you didn't use any force or coercion or hit anybody, and you didn't uh, threaten anybody with physical violence, you can never use threats of physical violence either, but then if they try to pull something like you did, then they're going to lose. You just sort of sit down and smile at that point and go, okay, coward, so we'll, we'll discuss this again later. Except you're going to be running from me. The cops don't like that. If you call the cops on somebody without a good enough cause. I, as I was driving away from work that day after explaining to the cops that I had done nothing, uh, they were scolding him. So, and ever since that day, he's walks by me, head down, shamed. And it, it should be shameful for him. It's appropriate that it's shameful for him. And that's what happens when you absolutely win, is you're the dominant one. And they they skulk around and you're dominant. But with the guy with the chair, you said, well, you can't lift that chair. It says, you know, most people say, it's because, or to give some explanation. I agree, that's a terrible response. Um, ignoring it entirely might be okay, depending on how you ignore it. So... If you stop and look at him, hmm. and then proceed to go back to what you're doing, and that might be effective because he that's not the response he wants. He wants to he wants to play jab and move, jab and move. Like I'm gonna poke this creature and make it move. If the way you move is as a predator moves, then it probably won't poke you again. If the way you move is as prey moves, then you will be prey. If you want to be real tricky, you can act like prey and trap them. That's always fun, if you can pull it off. How do you act like prey? Well, you go... Well, it, it, it's because, I, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to get stronger. And then see where it goes. Give him some rope, you know. And then start smiling. I mean... Gosh, if someday I could be as strong as you, you're so big and strong with your muscles and you're lifting up chairs. Can you, oh, could you go, could you go lift that desk, the big desk over there? Go lift it for us. Let's watch. Hey, everybody. Tommy's going to lift stuff for us because he's so big and strong. Go on, Tommy. What? You don't want to lift it up? Why not? Don't let anybody threaten you with physical violence. If you're a student in a school and you're getting quote unquote bullied, somebody's threatening you with physical violence or transgressing directly against you, like you're they're getting in your way, preventing you from just touching you at all, then all you got you you have all the arguments you need to win. You just go straight to the principal, you say, Listen, I'm reporting this. I expect it to be treated as seriously as it ought to be treated, that is to say treated as an assault. And if you don't follow up, I will be calling the police. This is unacceptable. You are you are not providing a safe environment for me. Just fucking go in there and take charge of that shit. Make them snap too. It's not acceptable for children to commit crimes against each other on a regular basis and victimize other children in school because they are in school. It's bad enough they're forced to be there. So, you know, you gotta. sometimes you got to put on your boss pants. I know that people who get bullied, like I did in school... <laughs> You know, we're kind of soft by nature. And a certain amount of that shit is necessary to toughen us up. You know, it's like I don't regret every aspect of everything that happened to me. I regret, I don't regret any of it. I didn't do anything wrong. But uh, I, I don't lament, I guess I should say. I don't lament it happening, really. Because now, having had to, ha having had to stand and fight on a few occasions as a child and into young adulthood and stuff and having to learn to that whatever else don't be a coward you know so if if you have good reason to think somebody's gonna kill you or shit fine get out of the way but don't back down make them hit you make them go to jail that's fine but make sure that you've got you're ready to run those arguments hard don't let it slide don't let anybody get away with anything 
So, uh... You know, I think... I think that verbal battle is... I mean, the thing is, being effective with words is way, way more powerful than just about anything else you exist in life. If you want to really kick some ass and take some names, learn how to win all the arguments. It's pretty important. It's like the most important thing you can do, frankly. Um, understand the setting when you're going to get into a fray of some sort. If if you're on their turf, it's a whole different ballgame. So you got to remember that. That uh, you got you, whether or not you, if it's neutral ground, whether it's your turf or their turf, it makes a huge difference. Also, what are you doing? Are you affirming, negating, character attacking? What? I mean, you can all if they do something snarky or or nasty, you you just you can always go to okay. Well, normally when people say things like that, they're projecting in some sense. So, are you? Do you feel inadequate because of your lack of strength, or is a good response? Or is this an exception to that? Give them an out, right? Let them take it. As soon as, you, as soon as they start following your lead, you've won. So you go like, but normally when people say things like that, they're projecting like some insecurity, but you seem pretty strong. Is this an exception to that rule? Yeah, I'm not projecting. You've won. Now you're helping them learn. People fucking hate that. Like this, uh, what's his name? He was tried. He tried to be nice, but I wasn't taking the bait. He did try to be nice briefly. He's like, I'm sorry about my tone or whatever. He didn't say I'm sorry. He's like, I think you may have misunderstood my tone. Well, sorry, that's not gonna fly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what's his name? He's really upset right now. He's he's really unhappy with with my uh, with the sturdiness of my my rhetoric. What's his name? Northern Goshock. Northern Goshock is very upset. He's he's determined to paint me as somebody who's unwilling to learn, who has to be right who isn't interested in gaining any new knowledge, whatever other bullshit he's trying to paint me as. Of course, he's forgetting the fact that this began with his defense of evolution by saying that all I have here going into my discussion of evolution is overconfidence and that holism explains why evolution is right. But as soon as you try to pin him down on anything, no mechanism, there's no test, there's no scientific, you know, no scientific rigor behind anything. And so then he sent me this link to some sort of multiverse notion, um, and that's, it may subsume evolution, but it's not a defense of evolution, that's for sure. I mean, is that what you mean by holism? Then why are you disagreeing with my evolution thing? It, you know, it's... People try to shift ground all the time, but the coin in question is whether evolution, as we're normally taught it in school, or as most people understand it to be, to be, is that what's responsible for species diversification, species diversity, and to try to explain why it is that most modern phyla all appeared almost simultaneously all around the world at the beginning of the Cambrian explosion, and why most species enter a period of stasis, and, and all those really huge critical central questions that remain unresolved if you claim you have an explanation and now you're claiming that no it's not evolution it's fractal universes okay well then why were didn't this start with you defending evolution against me saying evolution is bullshit maybe you provided the answers to why it's bullshit that'd be great i'd love to hear that but that's not how uh that's not how it started if it had been that way it would have been like the ENTP overconfidence turns out to be insightful again, as you're actually right, Eric, because holism is a preferable explanation, and it involves these fractal universes notion, right? And unless you're defending, you're saying, well, that makes your evolution, the mechanics of it irrelevant, because, but in that case, then, why would you dispute my critique on the mechanics of evolution? Hmm. So, yeah, that's the problem you got, right? You You stepped up to defend evolution, and to say that 
my critique of it was overly simplistic and or failed to understand X, Y, or Z or whatever, that it's way too complicated for an armchair philosopher like me to get, and that's why I don't understand why evolution works and why it seems to make no sense to me. Except it seems to make no sense to you either. Doesn't it? Now that you're sitting back trying to answer those questions, you're like, uh, yeah, well, we've got... There is a way to count this thing, but it's only relative and... Oh, he's right. Is that what you're experiencing right now? <laughs> or are you still trying to fight it? You're still trying to fight it? Okay. Well, you know, it's not fun losing. I know. But it's less fun when you cling. At some point you just kick it and go, okay, I can see the point. I agree, evolution's inadequate. I don't know why I jumped in. That's fine, though. It's, I do that kind of shit sometimes. Whatever. The point is, I really like this modal thing. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Well, let's hear about it. But if you're positioning it as winning the dispute on evolution, it's not. And you're being, as you accused me of, intellectually dishonest. I'm not being intellectually dishonest. My criteria are reasonable. If it's a theory that does explain where species comes from, then it needs to be able to answer some basic questions. Otherwise, it's not. Period. The end. Hmm. <sighs>